Hello, my name is Nenad Medvidovic. I'm from the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, and I have been uh, asked to opine on a couple of issues regarding the relationship of software architecture and COVID in the context of ICSA's NEMI um, uh, track. And uh, I subtitled this a marriage of inconvenience because this has obviously been a very inconvenient time for humanity. On the other hand, there have been certain things that have brought to the forefront the benefits that software engineering can actually bring to uh, humanity, and in particular software architecture, because that's the aspect of software engineering that we're focusing on. So the first question that I want to uh, opine on, say something about is, does software architecture contribute to infrastructures for management of pandemics? And the answer to me is uh, a resounding yes. Uh, this has been shown multiple times, many times through failures rather than successes, but these are very large systems and it, um, their complexity and uh, kind of the speed with which they have had to emerge remind me of uh, some of the things that uh, go back to this TV show that I uh, occasionally watch, uh, where one of the segments is uh, titled facetiously, I don't know it for a fact, I just know it's true. So when you look at uh, news reports such as this one from the New York Times that I show on this slide, basically, very quickly, you start suspecting strongly that the root causes are architectural, uh, that they have been definitely compounded by the required development speed, although that is not the only thing that has been uh, at issue here, that uh, many of these are systems of systems that require integration with third party components and systems. They are very heterogeneous because they come from all over the place, developed by all kinds of agencies and organizations. Uh, the scale here is uh, in some ways uh, mind boggling because these things that maybe used to hap happen on the local or regional scale, now we've actually asked for some of these capabilities to be available to us on the global scale. We can go on uh, and talk about many other uh, kinds of concerns that uh, in the end boil down to the requirement to have these architectural uh, solutions. So what can we learn from this uh, or about this? from the software architectural perspective, well, in this case, we needed systems fast and they needed to be put together from existing pieces. And the cool thing here that should have helped, although in reality, it might not have helped as much as we would have wanted to was that in many of these cases, cost was not an issue because governments were willing to invest as much money as necessary to get these systems uh, off the ground. Um, we have again seen examples of where we have dealt with low hanging fruit relatively successfully, meaning that we've had many, um, for example, uh, uh, apps that were helping us trace contacts uh, so we can track where the infection is spreading and so forth. Although this hasn't always worked because part of the problem was that this is an example, again, of software engineers developing solutions for problems that they know how to develop uh, solutions for rather than problems that the public needs uh, solutions for. In other words, the hiccups that we have faced in addition to these many of these apps not being nearly as adopted as originally was expected was the fact that when we needed these larger solutions, for example, in the US, this has been a serious issue, um, integrating many different pieces across many different regulatory and uh, governmental levels to allow people to do as simple of a thing as sign up for a vaccine these have actually not worked nearly as well. So um, does this create new challenges for us from a software architectural perspective? Yes, it does. Uh, one of the things that we have to keep in mind, and I'll just focus on that in the context of this brief um, uh, talk of a few minutes, we are dealing with global systems of systems, and this is strongly suggested that proprietary architectures are useless. So if you go to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention uh, website in the US, uh, you will find many of these tools for dealing with various aspects of a uh, pandemic. They are public tools in the public domain, open source and so, and, uh, so on. So uh, the issue here is that these are not necessarily new problems. It's just that the stakes have been so much higher. So where does that leave us in the end in terms of the impact of COVID on the state of the research and practice in software architecture? I'm afraid that this is not actually going to revolutionize things. 
it might improve things in the context of software architecture research because we tend to look at these larger, longer term problems. But we have to remember not to forget this as soon as the fad passes, as soon as the funding goes uh, elsewhere, right? Because this is not a fad. This is a real thing and new pandemics will arrive. We're, we're constantly being warned of this. Um, part of the issue here is that we might feel that there isn't anything new here, but that's kind of uh, sort of the, the uh, everyday occurrence with software architecture research. It's not so much that there are new problems, it's that we don't have very good solutions for problems that uh, already exist. Um, the other issue that we need to look at here is what happens to software practice. And here, I'm not sure that it's likely to significantly impact software architecture practice because we always need better tools and solutions. Uh, and then the one aspect that is maybe unique to COVID is that this push for better, uh, rather remote work that really predates COVID. So the thing that I think is actually going to harm innovation in the uh, context of software architecture practice is that if you go back to the original kind of um, axiom of software engineering, better, cheaper, faster, pick any two. Well, in this case, it was okay because uh, building it cheaply was not even an issue. So all we had to worry about was to build it better and faster. And even there, we kind of came up short. So I feel like at, at least in terms of practice, we're facing the same issues we always face. Uh, in terms of research, we might have some room for innovation, but of course, you might hear other opinions, and I myself would be very curious to uh, learn more about those. Thank you.